Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Uh, I'm Dr. Muhammad Naim Isa. So my topic today is uh, the common presentations of nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So I will talk a little bit about the surgical anatomy, the epidemiology of the MPC, the risk factors, and our main concern today is regarding the clinical features of nasopharyngeal carcinoma, and then a uh, little bit about the diagnosis and treatment of MPC. So, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is a non-lymphomatous squamous cell carcinoma that occurs in the epithelial lining of the nasopharynx. It shows varying degrees of differentiation and frequently seen at the fossa of frozen molar. So, a little bit about the anatomy of the nasopharynx. It is also, uh, called uh, as a post-nasal space and is a transitional zone between the nasal cavity and also the oropharynx. It is a cuboidal in shape and it is lined by the pseudo-certified squamous epithelium and the lateral wall uh, is where the fossa of Rosenmuller resides bilateral, bilaterally okay. fossa of Rosenmuller is a form by the bilateral projection of the nasopharynx just inferior to the skull base as you can see in this diagram the white arrow showing at the opening of the eustachian tube Posterior to it is the torus tuberius and posterior to that is uh, where the fossa of Rosenmuller is. Uh, it is also called as lateral pharyngeal recess and in adult it can measure up to 2.5 cm in depth. Okay. Uh, the uh, nasof uh, nasopharynx has a uh, extensive uh, submucosal lymphatic plexus drainage. Um, the first echelon of the first uh, the primary group that drains to the retropharyngeal lymph node and then it's also drained to the uh, spinal accessory uh, uh, groups and also drained to the jugulodiastric uh, groups. For the epidemiology of the nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it has highest incidence in South China, especially in Guangdong province. While in Malaysia, MPC is the fifth or the, the number five most common cancer in Malaysia and pre predominantly uh, can be found in Chinese. Okay, uh, this is the report by Malaysian National Cancer Registry. Um, the nasopharynx, as I mentioned before, it is the number five most common malignancy in Malaysia after breast, colorectal, lung, and also lymphoma. Okay, um, regarding the racial differences, uh, in Malaysia, it's mostly found in Chinese people and followed by Bidayo uh, and also uh, then by native of Borneo and Malay and, and least uh, found in Indian. Uh, for the um, uh, sex preponderance, uh, the, the male is more common to female with the ratio of 3 to 1 and uh, MPC has a bi age presentation. Uh, the first one during 18 to 24 years old and the next one is uh, during 65 to 70 years old with a peak of uh, at the peak of age at 50 to 55 years old. Okay. Um, for the risk factor of nasopharynx, um, uh, the first one is uh, ethnicity, uh, you know, that, uh, it's most common in Chinese. The next one is gender with the male to female ratio of 3 to 1. Uh, and also um, uh, family or patient with family history of uh, MPC. And lifestyle and environment also plays a um, role in the uh, development of uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. The risk factors include tobacco smoking, the con consumption of the salted fish, exposure to the domestic wood cooking fires, exposure to occupational solvent, and exposure to the wood dust. Okay, uh, for clinical features, um, we must understand that MPC is usually diagnosed late. It is due to the trivial presentation or vague presentation of um, uh, the uh, MPC itself, uh, which lead to poor survival outcome. So, um, this present the list of uh, clinical features. Uh, if the patient presented with any of the following symptoms that you suspect to have uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, uh, the patient should be, should be referred to ENT clinic as soon as possible to rule out MPC. Okay. The clinical features include uh, painless uh, neck lump or neck mass. It, it can be either unilateral or bilateral. Uh, or the second one is a blood stain uh, nasal discharge or uh, epistaxis or blood stain saliva. Uh, or patient can be presented with ear symptom 
like unilateral ear block or hearing loss or it can be headache, facial numbness or eye symptom like diplopia or reduced uh, vision. So this paper shows the distribution uh, of the complaint of patient with uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. So the most common presentation is uh, the uh, neck mass. It can be either unilateral or bilateral. And then it followed by uh, the complaint of bleeding from the nose or epistaxis and also headache. And you also can see the uh, complaint or presentation of uh, ear symptom can be either unilateral or bilateral. Okay. For the painless neck mass, uh, the, the complaint of neck mass can be the only manifest manifestation of the MPC and can be seen, the, the nodal mass can be seen in about 75 to 85% of the patient with uh, MPC. Um, so this is a meta-analysis result that shows the distribution of the limb node involved in MPC. So most common uh, involve the retropharyngeal limb node and also the level 2 limb node and some uh, can be presented at a, uh, presented with uh, level 3 limb node involvement and also others like level 5 and level 4 regarding the uh, ear uh, symptom it can be presented with unilateral uh, ear block or hearing loss so as mentioned before the obstruction of the recession tube uh, will lead to conductive hearing loss it can also present with tinnitus and also dizziness. And uh, uh, we, we must take note that the presence of unilateral serous otitis media in uh, adult should raise suspicion of uh, nasopharyngeal uh, uh, growth that block the um, recession tube. Okay, this is the endoscopic view of the ear. Uh, the, this, this one is the normal uh, appearance. Uh, you can see that there is a normal cone of light with a uh, normal clear uh, tympanic membrane uh, and for the uh, this one is the um, otitis media or serous otitis media you can see there is the distortion of the cone of light with retracted TM and also you can see the uh, bubble or effort level okay so um, uh, this study shows the distribution of the cranial nerve involvement um, uh, the most common cranial nerve involved, uh, uh, according to this study, uh, in MPC usually involve the cranial nerve 6 and followed by cranial nerve 3 and cranial nerve uh, 12. Uh, regarding the eye symptom, the patient can be presented with a uh, screen and diplopia when, in, when the tumor involves the cranial nerve 6 or it can be presented with uh, ophthalmopegia or complaint of facial pain or reduced corneal reflex when you involve the trigeminal nerve and uh, the, the presentation can be as of palmos and also blindness it involve if uh, the tumor involved the kind of two or uh, it may directly uh, invade the the orbit okay this uh, trotter striate is a symptom complex that associated with the infiltration of the, the uh, tumor itself that invade the lateral wall of the nasopharynx. It can be presented uh, with these three sim uh, symptoms. Uh, the first one is conductive hearing loss. Uh, the second one is the facial pain when it involves the uh, trigeminal nerve and so called tri trigeminal neuralgia. And the third uh, symptom of the triad is uh, palatal paralysis when it involves the vagus nerve. As you can see when you do the oral examination, you can see the uh, asymmetry of the palate. Okay, I think we finished talking about the clinical representation of uh, nasopharyngeal carcinoma. Uh, so when we receive this patient in ENT clinic, uh, usually we will perform uh, evaluation and endoscopic examination. Uh, so if there is any positive finding, I uh, will proceed with uh, biopsy. This biopsy can be done in clinical setting under LA or in some cases we will do under G, uh, general anesthesia. And then we will arrange uh, imaging studies, CT scan and, or MRI. So this is an example of uh, rigid nasal endoscopy uh, usually we perform in ENT clinic. Um, uh, for this patient, uh, it's done through the right nostril and you can see there's a mass uh, at the uh, post-nasal space or at the nasopharynx area. Uh, it's an irregular surface and usually uh, we will do 
biopsy in the same setting. Okay, for for staging uh, of MPC, we use AJCC American Joint Committee on Cancer Staging, TNM staging. So for uh, T2, uh, it just has a soft tissue involvement. If it involves the bony structures like skull base or vertebra, it's already T3. Or it involves the uh, intracranial extension, it has intracranial extension or involve the cranial nerve. So it, it already uh, T4. Okay. So for stage 1, um, uh, we refer, I mean for this patient, we refer to oncology team. And then uh, for stage 1, they usually they start uh, radiotherapy. Uh, for stage 2, 3 and early 4, for even 4B, usually they will start concurrent chemotherapy and also radiotherapy. And for stage 4B, usually it's, it's a palliative uh, treatment for the patient. Okay, I think uh, that's all for my presentation regarding uh, the common presentation of uh, MPC. I think the most important thing that uh, we should take note is that the uh, symptom of MPC at early stage is usually non-specific. And because of that, uh, most uh, uh, patients diagnosed with MPC usually at the advanced stage. Uh, that's why we need good uh, primary uh, nasopharyngeal cancer MPC screening. Uh, this may contribute to early detection and then improve the treatment outcome for, for the patient. Okay, uh, I would like to thank um, all for your attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.